So if you have a car and the engine's overheating, but then it stops and it goes back to normal and it stops overheating, or it's just overheating periodically and then it goes back to normal, I thought I'd go over the most common causes of this and how you can go about fixing it if you wanted to. And so what are some possible causes? Well, it could be the coolant level. The thermostat might be stuck. There could be air pockets inside the coolant system. The radiator fan could be malfunctioning. One of the sensors could be failing. The coolant system might need to be flushed out and the water pump might be starting to fail. And so the first thing to do if this happens to you is to go check the coolant level and be sure that it's correct. Since it might just be low and just might need a little bit of coolant added in, be sure to do this when the engine's cool because that liquid can't be hot. So basically go out there, find the reservoir, and there's usually markers on it that'll say high or low. So basically go check the coolant level. If it is low, then add in some coolant. And so if that looks good, then the next thing that could cause this issue is gonna be the thermostat. And the thermostat is a simple device. It basically just stays shut when the engine's cold and then it starts to open as the engine gets hotter. And so when the engine's really cold on first start, this will be completely shut, but as the engine warms up it'll slowly start to open and this regulates the temperature inside the engine and so when the thermostat starts to malfunction quite often it gets stuck shut all the way and so you'll know because the engine's always overheating but sometimes it can just open partially which can cause problems like the engine overheating but then it cools down or things like this and so the thermostat's going to be the next thing to go and check and the thermostat's going to be located underneath a housing on the top of the engine somewhere and it'll be connected to the hose going into the top part of the radiator and so when there's an issue with the thermostat a lot of people will check it with an infrared temperature gun They'll basically measure the, what the temperature is on this side of it, and then they'll measure what the temperature is on the other side, on the engine block, and they'll see how much of a difference there is. Because if this becomes completely blocked, one side will be really hot and the other side will be cooler. There's also some other methods that can be done to check the thermostat. There's some good YouTube videos on that if you want to check that out. Quite often when there's a heating related issue, most people would just go ahead and swap out the thermostat since it's a low cost part. It's usually less than five, ten dollars. But you can troubleshoot if you want to by checking the temperature before the water goes into the thermostat and then the temperature as the water is leaving the thermostat and see what the difference is. But next thing to go and check is going to be the thermostat. And so if the thermostat looks good and there's no issues there, then the next thing that can cause this problem is going to be air pockets inside the coolant system. And basically what happens when you get air pockets inside the coolant system is that along with the coolant flowing around inside the engine, there's also these air pockets that flow with it and they're stuck inside the loop with the coolant. And since air doesn't transfer the heat as well as the coolant, it can cause some issues and cause overheating and all kinds of problems. Usually when you have air pockets inside of the coolant system, the heater won't work. So if you check out the heater and you turn it on and that's not working or it's not working very well, then you very likely have air pockets inside of the coolant system. And this is a very common cause for engines that heat up and then the heating goes away or it's just periodic or things like this. And the main method that you go about getting air pockets out of the coolant system is that you take a jug and you attach it to the coolant reservoir or in some cases the radiator and then you fill it up with coolant and you let the engine run and as the bubbles come out then coolant will go in and it'll slowly bleed the whole system these jugs like this with this cap they could be bought at automotive stores or there's also like diy homemade ones that you can make there's some youtube videos on that if you wanted to do that too but the next thing to go and check is going to be if you have any air pockets inside of the coolant system and so if that looks good then the, then the next thing to go and check is going to be the radiator cooling fans and it can vary sometimes there's one sometimes there's two it'll just vary but basically you'll have some cooling fans on the radiator that'll cool down the coolant as it's flowing through and so if there's an issue with the cooling fan, then this can cause issues. And a common way you could tell if it's a cooling fan is that cooling fans only start to work when a vehicle's doing under like 25, 30 miles an hour. If it's going over like 30, 40 miles an hour down the road, then the air will go past the radiator and that will cause cooling. So an engine doesn't really need the fans at that point. But if you're at a stoplight and it starts to overheat or it starts to overheat right after that, then that's a big sign that it's a cooling fan because cooling fans only really are needed when the vehicle's doing under like 20. 25, 30 miles an hour. And so if this is happening to you, if you do a lot of city driving, you're hitting a lot of stoplights and you're in traffic and the vehicle's overheating, then try to do like at least 35, 40 miles an hour and see if it cools down. If it does and it stays cooled down and it doesn't overheat when you're doing that, then very likely it's a cooling fan problem and you'll have to go out there and see what's going on with those. But that would be the next thing to check is the cooling fans. And so if you check that all out and that all looks good, then the next thing that could cause this problem is going to be the engine coolant temperature sensor. And when these fail, different things can happen, but quite often the engine is not overheating, but the gauge is telling you that it's overheating. So basically when this fails, it's just reporting back bad data. 
And so the onboard computer just thinks there's a problem and there's not a problem. So if your temperature gauge is reading that it's overheating, but your engine is not overheating, then very likely that engine coolant temperature sensor has failed. Of course, some vehicles do have multiple engine coolant temperature sensors. They'll have one on like the radiator. They'll have one on like the engine block, like this right here. This is a 2018 Dodge Charger. So there can't be different things going on with these temperature sensors. And it can vary a little bit depending on the vehicle. But the next thing to go and check is going to be the engine coolant temperature sensor. And then the next thing on the list is going to be that the engine coolant system just needs to be flushed. Sometimes buildup can happen inside of these systems and a bunch of debris and other things get inside of there and they just clog everything up. And so the whole engine coolant could be flushed. There's different ways you could go about doing this. Some people will just drain the coolant and then just put in all new coolant. Some people will drain the coolant, put in coolant, let it run for five, 10 minutes, drain that, and then put in other coolant. Or another method is where you have a bucket to catch all the coolant and you run a hose through the cooling system until it flushes everything out. There's different ways you go about doing this. But basically, the next thing to go and do would be just to flush that whole cooling system and flush out any debris that might be inside of there. And then the last thing on the list is going to be that the water pump is failing. And the water pump is what pumps all the water all the way through the cold cooling system. So if there's an issue here, then it could cause problems. Usually a water pump doesn't cause periodic overheating usually when it fails it, the engine just overheats all the time but it is possible that it's working sometimes and then it's failing or something along these lines different things can happen sometimes quite often when these water pumps fail there's a seep hole underneath there and they'll drip water out when they failed but the next thing to go and check is going to be that the water pump failed and so that's basically it i just wanted to go over the most common causes when a car overheats and then it goes back to normal and stops overheating if you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.